Hey guys, in this video we're going to be setting up the project, but before we do I have a quick announcement. I set up a Discord channel. If you'd like to join you can ask questions there and chat just about the tutorial in general. Uh, and the link will be in the description below if you're interested in that. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that we'd be using this uh, repo right here, and this is kind of just like an example yarn workspace. Um, but I took a look at it again and it's we're just going to be using such a little bit of this. I figured we might as well just set that up this part from scratch because it's just setting up the package.json because we want to set up a yarn workspace. Um, and in this I was using something called Lerna which I don't think we need right away. So we'll talk about later uh, with that if we need to add it to the project at all. Alright so I have a terminal open up right here and I'm just going to make a directory. So I'm going to call this ab short for uh, Airbnb and that's going to be kind of the project name that I'm going to be using throughout this tutorial. And I'm going to just open that folder up in Visual Studio Code. Um, if I just type code and then a dot it'll open that up for me. Um, I'm going to just full screen this and bring this over. Alright, so first thing that we're going to do, like I said, is set up a package.json file. So this is going to be the root, and how we're going to be setting this up is a mono repo. So what's going to happen is this is going to be the root directory, and this we're going to have a packages folder that's going to contain our server, our React Native app, and our React app. So to initialize this and to basically handle do all these things, uh, for a mono repo, we're going to be using yarn workspaces. So that's what we're initializing right now. So we're going to say private true, and then you specify your packages. So packages. And for us, our packages, oops, not packages, workspaces. So our workspaces are in a folder called packages. So we're going to make a folder called packages. So this is where we're going to put all of our code inside of packages. And we did a packages star here, so it grabs all the folders that we add to packages automatically. So those are going to be a yarn workspace uh, right off the bat. All right, uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention in yesterday's video is I'm going to be using the terminal uh, that's built into Visual Studio Code. So right here, I can do ls, I can do whatever I want here. So you're going to see me just kind of pop that in and out like that. If you'd like to, you can also open it through view and then I think it's terminal, yep, integrated terminal right here. I have this little hockey memorized, so I just have it pop up uh, and down. So that's what I'm gonna be using uh, to do commands and whatnot. All right, so that's pretty much all we need to do to set up the Yarn workspace. Now we just need to add our first package. So this is what we're gonna use for this server. So this is something that I have built before, uh, and I did a series on this uh, of videos of how I built this. So if you're interested to see how this is built, if you're new to this, I have a link to the playlist there, or I'll also have one in the description below. So we're gonna just clone this. And for those of you that have your own version of this, um, the only thing I updated from the video is just upgrade the dependencies uh, on this specifically. Also, TypeScript is now version 2.9 in this project. But yeah, so we're just gonna click on here. We're gonna copy that so we can clone this. So I'm gonna CD into packages, and then I'm gonna say git clone. Uh, this project and then I'm going to call it server. So that will add the project so now inside of packages I should have a server. Now this has its own git um, folder in there so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. So remove rf.git inside of the, sol uh, the server folder. Um, and so now we have only a single, well I guess we don't even have a single uh, git so I'm going to just do git init in the root directory. So I'm going to have one git that encompasses uh, all the packages and whatnot that's going to be in the very root. Uh, and I'm just going to move the git ignore up to the root directory where our package.json is. Alright, so I want to just quickly um, show you how you can run this. And actually, before we do, let's go ahead and run yarn install to install uh, the de dependencies for this. Alright, so there is something called the orm config. So this thing is how you set up how it connects to the database. So we're going to be using a PostgreSQL database and Redis. So PostgreSQL is going to be storing our data. Redis is for sessions and kind of just a uh, caching slash memory that's just like going to hold some things temporarily. 
Now, this is how you connect to PostgreSQL, and there's two things. There's development and there's test. Um, and this server, for testing, this is basically how you should connect to the database. So, for example, I'm saying I want to connect to a PostgreSQL database. Here's the host, the port, whatnot, uh, the username, and the password. And here's the database name. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to, going to install PostgreSQL. Um, and then you want to create a database and make sure PostgreSQL is running. One way you can te uh, test this is doing psql, I guess not dash v, maybe dash version. Yep, so I'm using version 10.4 of psql. Um, this is how you can connect and do stuff with uh, PostgreSQL from the command line. Um, what we're going to want to make sure is you have a database of this name. Now you can also uh, call it whatever you want, but make sure you uh, change the name in this orm config. So you can run create create db, and you can copy this one right here, paste that, and that will go ahead and create the database for you, assuming you do have PostgreSQL uh, installed on your computer. All right, so the other thing is we also have a non-testing database. So again, you want to name this something different, and you're also going to have to have a user for this. So I called mine Postgres, and uh, password is just nothing, and I have that for both. But again, if you, whenever you set up a user for your Postgres instance, you can specify both of those things here. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure your Postgres SQL is up and running. We want to test and make sure that this server installation is correctly working. The other thing it needs is Redis. So if we look inside of source, or if we wanted to, we could hit Command P, type Redis. Um, you'll notice I'm just using the default parameters to connect to Redis. So you're going to want to have that installed on your computer. And the way you can tell is you can run Redis CLI and see if you're able to connect OK to it. So I already have Redis up and running. If you don't, you can start it with the Redis, I think, yep, the Redis server. Um, I already have one running in the background, so I'm not going to keep this up. Uh, yeah, so that's that. So you should have Redis and you should have Postgres up and running. If you have both of those things and you've run yarn install, you can run the tests. So we're going to cd into packages and the server, and then we're just going to do yarn test. Um, now, when you run this, it actually shouldn't work. It should actually break. Um, and the reason for that is our ORM config cannot be found. Um, at least that's what we should dare we should get. And the reason for that is we have our node modules, so you should get this error no connection options were found. So take a look at this. So if we look at our node modules for our server, you'll notice there's nothing inside of that. And that's because we are using Yarn workspaces. So everything is in this root directory. So it expects to look for this file in the root directory. So we're just going to remove orm config to the very root. So now I have orm config next to package.json and next to the git ignore. And now we can run this again. So yarn test. Uh, and the other thing, I'm using the dash dash wash watch command, which requires it to be a git repository. So just make sure you do have this set up as a git repository. Um, but the all these tests should pass. If you have Redis up and running, um, you have these two databases created and Postgres running, uh, and that'll just verify it. And let me know if you have any questions setting this up, um, either in the Discord or in the comments below. And yeah, so now we have the server up good running in this Yarn workspace. Uh, the other thing that we want to set up is the uh, website, because that's the first thing that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to CD up, and we are going to be using this boilerplate. So this is Create React App, and it's the TypeScript version. So to install this, we're going to just do this. So first, make sure you actually have the CLI for it, so the Create React App CLI. I already have this on my computer, so I don't need to run this command right here. Uh, I'm just going to skip that and go here. So I'm going to run this, and I should change this to, um, we'll call this website. I'll call it web. Now, if you run it just like this, I think it should actually crash. And the reason for that is um, we have a workspace, right? And there's actually like a bug in Create React App and in uh, running it inside of a workspace. Because this is uh, basically a sub package, right? Web is inside of packages. Um, it doesn't like it. 
We'll see if it does work or not. If it doesn't work, what I usually do is I'll actually just rename package.json and I'll just call it like uh, Bob or something. And once I change this to be bob.json instead of package.json, what happens is this is no longer a Yarn workspace. Um, and so it's able to install OK. And then when, whenever this goes ahead and installs all the stuff, what we're going to do is inside of web, you'll have a node modules. We're just going to remove that, rename this to package.json, and then do a yarn install that will install all the dependencies in the root directory. But we'll let this finish installing, and then we'll come back and do that. All right, so that finished running. If we cd into web, and I do an ls, we should see there's a node modules, and you should see there's a bunch of junk in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it, and then I'm going to rename this to package.json, uh, and then I'm going to run yarn install. So what that will do is um, the idea with Yarn Workspaces is it keeps all the dependencies in the root directory so you won't have a node modules per server and per web and per every application that you add. You just have one big node modules. Now you did see there were some things inside of the server so not everything goes down um, into or, or goes up into that so if we see um, there's this types directory. so. Is there actually anything inside of there? So okay, jest is down here for whatever reason. So it doesn't grab everything, but it does grab a ton of packages, right? So only it looks like only one was kept. Um, but if we were to ls, we go up, there's now a giant node modules in the root directory. Um, all right, so we have the web set up. We have the server set up. I wanna verify that web actually works. So to do this, we can just do yarn start. And what this will do is uh, start up the server. And we can actually, if we click on package.json, we can see what it does. So it does React scripts, TS start, and that just boots up the server um, and runs the React application. And we should just see hello world there. And good, we do. Um, looks like we have a little bit of a problem here. Async iterator cannot find, um, which is kind of interesting. I guess we can just add this as a thing. Um, this whenever I get this, actually whenever I get this error, so this is a TypeScript thing. Whenever I get this error, it's usually on the server. Um, and if we look at the TS config in there, I actually have to add a specific library for it. So I can add this to my TS config right here and see if that fixes it so it's kind of interesting it looked like it worked for a second and then this little error popped up um, we'll see if this fixes it the other thing I have is this just all of ES 2017 so I don't know if that is needed as well we'll see um, it looks like we also have declaration observable must have identical modifiers. Okay, so this is something that I have, uh, I've come across when working with Yarn Workspaces, and I was hoping we weren't gonna get it, but basically we have types that are clashing between our server and our website. So what we have to do is in our TS config is specify exactly what types that we're using. Um, so that's what we'll do in the next video, and we'll get this thing up and running. We have to specify, hey, TS config. We're not using all the types that the server's using. Um, we're specifically using Jest and Node and React and React DOM and whatnot. So that's what's coming up next. We'll get this up and running. I'll see you next time.